can you see my screen? Okay. Okay. Yes, I can. Great. Thanks, I like it. Okay. Uh, so you're on. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, I'm going to talk about um, a little bit of work I've been thinking about for a while. Um, uh, a calculus I call Handler Calculus. And this is basically inspired by the observation, of kind of not that surprising, that um, if we're working with algebraic effects and handlers, well, what, what are computations? They are trees. Or, so you can view them as data types. Um, and typically what we do is, is we might add our effects or computations to some existing lambda calculus. But instead of doing that, I wanted to see, well, can I start with a minimal calculus that only has effects? And then I will encode other features, um, data types, functions, sums, products, et cetera, on top of my, my other calculus. So, so this is, this is my, my attempt at doing that. Uh, and it's, it's a lot of these things I, I've kind of done before, but this is, this is just sort of bringing them together. So, so quite a lot of it was inspired by what we did with, with Frank. Um, so well, that was with, with Connor McBride and, and other people, uh, programming language for effect handlers. Um, okay, so I'll, I'll uh, just begin with my, I'm going to kind of skip over these first few slides probably. This is just a, 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 an introduction to why we want effects. Uh, uh -huh. So idea being that, that, that having pure computation is, is not enough in, in practice. It's, we need some sort of interaction. And this, this picture here is showing uh, the program talking to an operating system that, that communicates with the environment somehow. We have lots of different forms of, of effects. Um, effect handlers are a nice way of, of generalizing over all of these things um, that give us a composable, customizable, user-defined interpretation of effects in general. And in particular, they give you direct access to the, the environment. So very similar to what we get with resumable exceptions or monads or delimited control. Plus, effect handlers are actually seeing quite a lot of impact in, in industrial practice. So it's, this is a, a useful thing. Um, and then this picture is kind of depicting this idea of effect handlers as composable user-defined operating systems. So inside our actual program, um, we might have these little effect handlers and they provide various interfaces and you can plug them together. But anyway, this is, this is just some introductory material. Hopefully most of the audience uh, know about effects and effect handlers. I'm gonna give, uh, also give you one little example um, just to give you some notation. So this is, uh, I mean, in, in Donnell's talk, previous talk, he was talking about eight uh, preemptive concurrency, but the, here's the, the, the classic cooperative concurrency example. So let's assume we have um, an effect signature with a single operation that's called yield. So it takes no, just a unit and gives you back a unit. Uh, and we want to implement some form of lightweight threads. So I might have, these two threads here, and this is just to illustrate how the, the interleaving of these things works. So it's going to, the first one is going to print out a value, then yield, and print another value, and the, the second one's the same. Um, and what's nice about effect handlers is we can actually define the cooperative concurrency just directly in our programming language. We don't have to hardwire anything. So here's, here's a, a canonical example of a, a cooperative concurrency handler. It takes, okay, so it's actually a function that takes a collection of, of all of the, 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 the current resumptions or threads. So if that's empty, then we just return unit. If it's, if it's not empty, then we take the first one in the queue and we, we, we handle it. And then the handler has, the structure of a handler has two, two parts. It has what to do in the case that the, the computation finishes and we return a value. It's going to return the unit value. Well, we just keep on um, handling all of the other resumptions. That's straightforward. And then if we come across, the, the, this is the, 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 the important part of, of effect handlers where we actually come across an operation and our only operation is yield. 
Um, but as well as getting the payload of the operation, which is just unit, you also get this resumption. Uh, and that represents the rest of the computation that you're handling. So what happens now? Well, we just continue, but we stick the, 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 the resumption of the current thread on the end of the queue. And that's it. That's a, a very concise implementation of concurrency. And we can implement all kinds of other effects here. This is just one example. Uh, I should say this is this is I've done this using a shallow version of handlers. So the resumption here, the, the handler is not automatically being uh, wrapped around the resumption here. I've had to use the general recursion of the programming language in order to to keep going around. That was just because it it gives it, it's a bit more simpler. It's a bit simpler to present that on a, on a single slide. But I'm actually going to switch to deep handlers later. So if we run this, then it interleaves as expected. So okay, anyway, there's there's effect handlers. Now I'm going to move on to the the, the actual calculus. So handler calculus. Um, so as with with um, many of the systems uh, you've already seen today, actually we have a, a separation between values and computations, and that appears at the type level as well as elsewhere. Um, we need something to get going. An empty type is what I'm providing. Uh, and then we also have a type of handlers. So this says um, this type takes a, a, a computation C of type C and, and uh, handles it using a computation of type D. And well, what is a computation type? It returns a value, um, but it also has an effect. And an effect is just given by a signature of operations. Uh, I've chosen to make my operations enery here, uh, which gives a, an easy way of encoding products. Um, OK, so, so fairly simple set of types there. And then we have the terms. And the only kind of value terms we have are variables and handlers. Um, and a handler consists of a return clause and a collection of operation clauses, like you saw in the example. So because we have the empty type, we also have an elimination form, absurd, for the empty type. Um, I've chosen to include return and let because it's nicer, but you could, in theory, well, no, you definitely can get rid of these technically if you want. And in fact, you can get rid of return clauses if you want because you can encode those as exception operations. Uh, but then we have operations and we have handling of computations. Uh, but notice that this, this thing here is a, a general value because the, 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 the handlers are first class values themselves. Here's some typing rules. Uh, you don't need to look at all of the details. Uh, the crucial thing is we have a judgment for values and a judgment for computations. Variables are standard. Absurd is pretty standard. And return and let are as well. You see the effects in let have to be the same in both components. Um, when we have an operation, it needs to be in the effect of the computation type. And then handling is like a form of, of application. And the complicated one is the handler rule, but it's it's basically just what you'd expect. Um, I guess the important point is that this is a deep handler, um, which means um, that the the return type of this resumption here is the final um, computation type D here. Um, which means that the handler is is automatically wrapping itself around. Um, I mean, we will see that here in the in the in the operational semantics, which again is 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 pretty standard. Um, so we have a, a a standard rule for for let. If you have a return inside a let, you just do a substitution, and then. For the return clause of a handler, you have a very similar rule. And this kind of hints at why, well, you didn't, don't really need let if you if you want to get rid of it. But it's that you end up with a more compositional system if you do keep let and return. Uh, so, so here, yeah, it's just, just substituting the value for in the, the return clause. 
And then for operations, um, you capture the, the the context up to the the, the nearest handle, uh, and crucially, we wrap the, the the handler again around the, the context. This is, so this is deep. Okay, so this is this this basic calculus. I, I don't think it shouldn't be very controversial. Hopefully, um, now what I'm going to show you is just how we encode lots of different things in this. Uh, so first of all, some syntactic sugar. So we can just talk about a, a pure type by just um, a, a pure type is just one that doesn't have any any effects, and we can omit those effects in that case. Uh, the unit type we can do is a handler that goes from um, empty a pure empty to pure empty. Uh, we can do thunks then. Uh, it's often going to be convenient with my encodings to um, use the empty type. So we're basically going to use the effect structure to encode data types. So I'll just omit the zero in that case. Uh, similarly, we might actually have operations that don't return a value. So these are basically like exceptions. Um, and then in which case I just won't write the zero. Uh, the pure handler that returns a value of empty, no, sorry. Yeah, pure handler of an empty type computation is quite convenient to use sometimes. I'll just write bottom for that. Uh, and then this is for exception handlers where we don't need the resumption. I don't bother writing the, the resumption if you don't need it. Um, so as I said, yeah, this is all kind of coming from this, this view of computations as trees. So if you're familiar with the, the free monad kind of encoding, then uh, it's not that surprising that we're going to be able to encode data types here. Uh, and in particular, if you imagine if you've got this functor here, if we instantiate A to zero, then essentially we're just taking the fixed point of a functor. So first of all, let's start with functions. Um, we can just... It, if we have pure no effects, then then well we've got a function. So that, that we've already got something like a function type. We might want to do effectful functions where we actually have a, a pure um, computation where we're handling and we produce um, some computation with effects. And then lambda is just a a pure handler with a return clause and nothing else. An application is is just where we handle that. Okay. Uh, unit, I already mentioned, we can do that as, as a, a handler going from zero to zero, and then just the identity handler. Uh, although actually we could have chosen the, the bottom handler as well, that would have worked just as well. Uh, products, our operations are enary, so we can just encode them um, by using a pair operation. And here's the sort of pattern you'll see uh, cropping up over and over again. Um, we're encoding our data type as a thunk, um, where inside that thunk we run we run the pair op operation here. That, that builds a pair. And then to deconstruct it, I've chosen to do it with this, this um, let um, sort of pattern matching elimination form here. Um, we just handle that thunk. Um, and yeah, you have the bottom clause because here there's a, an implicit zero. And, and that should be straightforward. Uh, we get sums kind of for free from the, the, the operation structure here. So you can just have injection operations and then uh, the elimination using the case. We, we, we have the different clauses for, for the two injections. Uh, but we can also do more more interesting things. And this is taking advantage of the fact that this is a deep handler that is effectively build, building in a form of, of um, fold or primitive recursion. So here we have uh, natural numbers. We, we have the zero constructor, which we do as a zero effect. Uh, 
but because zero is is kind of the end of your data type, that's the um, we actually return zero here. Whereas the successor, it actually returns a unit. So if we if we want to encode zero, well, it's like that. But but if you want to encode the successor, then you you actually you run successor, and then this is this is sequential composition here, which is encodable using let. Uh, you do suck, and then you you continue with the rest of the, the natural number, and then we can encode a, um, a recursor as well. Uh, so you have the zero case and the successor case, and you just handle this this um, natural number computation here. Uh, And, and uh, in the zero case, you, you, you take the zero case, but in the successor case, you see you get the resumption here, and, and that, that's what allows it to, to keep on going. Uh, we can go further. We can do lists, for instance, using the same kind of pattern. And in general, we, could, we can do, you can encode any data type, any positive data type. <laughs> Uh, but a, a sort of more direct way of encoding recursive types involves extending our calculus slightly um, with recursive effects. So, I mean, this is, this is a little bit um, unsatisfactory because you're suddenly collapsing everything, but but it it's worth at least considering. So if we if we add recursive effects to to the system, so um, that that's actually useful for. If we took that cooperative concurrency example I had before, we might want to add a, another operator talking off new 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 processes so that we didn't just have a fixed set of co cooperative processes. But inside the fork operation, you see you have a thunk, which needs to be able to perform the same effects again. So, so recursive effects are a thing that's useful. Uh, though there are other ways of doing this that are, are a little bit more well-behaved, but more complicated in some ways, like scoped effects. But anyway... If we've added these things, then we can just encode um, recursive data types in a very general way here by adding a, a role operation. And then role just invokes that. Uh, so, so, so in here, you see this effect is, is, is recursive. Uh, and then unrolling is just matching against the role operation. Um, a more interesting extension, I think, is making the, the operations parametric. So this is useful, vaguely useful for, for doing exception handling, but you can also do much more general examples like um, general versions of shift and reset. Um, so, But I'm, I'll just illustrate this example. If we, we have a fail... Um, exception here. The idea with an exception is you should be able to invoke it anyway. Hence, we abstract over this type variable here and we say rather than it returning a particular type, it can return any type at all. Um, when I sort of efficient, originally thought about these things, I was thinking of the sort of polymorphic operations and thinking, oh, does that let me encode um, universals? But it doesn't. And if you think about it, is uh, what you've really got here is, is existential types because um, when you have one of these operations, they're abstract. You're providing a pair of the type and the operation. Uh, and then here's, so here's the encoding you get of existential types. We have a, a pack operation and then an existential pair is just obtained by using the pack operation and the elimination form um, which you see kind of matches up with the way in which I did the pair elimination before. That's why I chose that, that syntax. It, it is just matching against pack and, and pulls it apart. And uh, so, so that's, that's quite nice. Uh, and now I'm going to go off on a slight digress digression. Because uh, I got to this stage in, in this exercise and I was kind of thinking, well... Um, I know that I can encode existentials using universals. Uh, can I do something the other way around? Can I encode universals using existentials so that I don't have to add some extra thing to my, my calculus? Uh, I mean, 
I'm not sure this is necessarily a good idea, but it was an interesting exercise for me, and it uh, exposed me to some things I hadn't previously really thought about. So first, let's, let's just sort of think about where this encoding might come from. Uh, so the usual encoding, you can see it arising from the, the, the De Morgan, the classical De Morgan dual of, of existentials. If there exists an X such that A, then that's the same as not for all X, not A. And then if we expand out the knots, you can stick, uh, so not A becomes A arrow bottom, for instance, then you see this. But if you're in uh, system F, then you can actually generalize this type by sticking an extra for all around it. And this is really nice because it gives you compositional encodings of universals. Because yeah, once you end up with bottom, you're kind of a bit stuck. But it, but with this type, you can instantiate it with whatever type is necessary. And, and this is used all over the place. So what happens if we try doing going the other way? Uh, well, we can still do a De Morgan dual thing here. Uh, but you can't generalize. Well, you can try and generalize this type, but but then you're introducing another for all, which was the thing we were trying to eliminate. So it doesn't really work. Um, but we're not completely lost here. You can still do an, uh, an encoding along these lines, and it is essentially a, a CPS encoding. The, the, the disadvantage versus this, this other system F one is it's going to be a, um, a, a global transformation you're going to have to do on your program. You're going to have to turn everything into CPS and you, you're going to get some final result type. Um, and when I looked into this, I realized that there's some nice work by Fujita who, who worked out a, a, a very minimal CPS translation. Um, just for a, a very minimal, well, what, do you, what we call uh, minimal existential logic, where we have bottom, we have negation, which you can think of as functions that don't return a value. We have products and existentials, but you don't have anything else. And what's rather cool about this is you can encode the whole of system F in this language. Uh, yeah, so this, this is the language. So you, do, you have lambdas, but, but this M here, must have type bottom. Uh, and this is basically his, his translation. Uh, so it's, it's worth looking to understand it. I think you, 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 it's best to look at the translation on judgments because you see that the context actually gets negated. It, it, you, the, the variables that appear in the context, turn for, turn, because they start off as value variables, but they turn into continuation variables. And also the, the returned value is also um, a, a continuation. Uh, this allows him to translate X to itself. But I guess I, I'm not going to go through the details of this, I, but I'm just going to say it's, it's nice and simple. Um, so, okay, this, this, this kind of works, but how do I fit that into my setting? And I, this is something I've not actually fully worked out but one way we can we can deal with this is if we wanted to take um, the the handler calculus with parametric operations and then we want to add universals we can actually just compose two CPS translations together because we can give a CPS translation for the handler calculus I gave and then um, compose that with this translation um, and CPS translation goes to into um, system F. Uh, again, I'm not sure I want to go through all of the, uh, yeah, I definitely don't want to go through all the details of this, but I'm just telling you that this is, this is a, a, a relatively um, routine exercise and it, and, it, and it just works out um, reasonably well. Uh, and there, these are the definitions. <laughs> Uh, I guess the the key thing is that you have computations in this effectful calculus end up being represented as pairs of continuations and dispatches that tell you how to um, 
implement the operations. Uh, and it scales to deal with the existentials that we get from the parametric operations. So I'm going to uh, finish up here with a couple of questions that I haven't properly um, thought about yet, or I have thought about, but I haven't worked out the details of. So effect poly adding effect polymorphisms to this is uh, probably essential, but it, it makes makes the picture more complicated. You need something more than system F, I think, you, if you want to do the CPS translation. And then the other thing, as I sort of alluded to earlier, uh, this question is a, a nice kind of compositional translation of, of universals into a minimal parametric handler calculus so that I don't actually have to, uh, yeah, do this very uh, monolithic thing. But, but that's that, that's something um, for future work. Anyway, I uh, that that's that's it for me. So thanks. Any more questions? Okay, thank you. Thank you. Right. Uh, there are actually a couple of questions on Q and A. Can you see them, by the way, or I have to read them? I think I can see them. So Yotam there says, "What do you mean by getting a more compositional system?" If more compositional system if you keep let. Uh, let's see. So, I mean, part of it. Actually, maybe let's not so problematic. I, I, I like starting off from this very minimal calculus where you only have let and return. Uh, and you don't have anything higher order at all. That we can encode it with this more sophisticated system, it's not it's not too harmful, but it doesn't feel quite right. I, I think if you try to decompose various denotational semantics, you might it might become more apparent. Uh, the the other thing of uh, being able to encode return that really does get in the way of 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 computation if you encode return as uh, composition of computations if you encode return as um, an, uh, an exception. So uh, yeah, anyway, I don't know whether that answers your question, but feel free to ask me more about that later if you, if you want. Uh, the next question, um, Kanichi uh, Asai, how do you find the matching handler in OP of the small step semantics? I don't know what what that means. I think it probably your rule for the handler, so you, for uh, in operational semantics for your handlers. So uh, well, when it uh, operation does not match, as, or the handler uh, it does not match. Yes, sorry. In my in my um, for calculus, uh, the type system is going to ensure that you have to give complete handlers, so it must match. Okay. Uh, yeah, so I kind of simplified things there. In this is another. There are other extensions that are important here in practice, like effect forwarding, where you have to do something more complicated. I, I <laughs> it's a constant time search because you, the, the the immediately enclosing handler must be there because because the handler has to handle all operations. Okay. So this, this is the same as in the original presentation of handlers that, that Gordon and Mattia gave. Okay. Well, it's it's all the time, unfortunately. We have I also have questions, but I'll ask you later. Uh, well, thank you again for the presentation. Well, we'll continue some other time, but now it's the last speaker of the uh, session, Yotam uh, Dvir. He would present uh, his journey.